Short, bald, and angry. My dreams, my dreams, my dreams. You sometimes dreams, find that dreams, dreams get in the dreams, way of your dream. Get out of here. Dreams, dreams blocking dreams. Am I saying everybody else? Dreams preventing my dreams from dreaming. Get out of here, Baldy. He called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. God. Then two she-bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. <laughs> I'm a shooter, goddammit. Cross me again, I'll put a bullet through your head! Not that kind of shooter. I'm a peace-loving shooter. A cameraman. I might appear to be short, bald, and angry on the outside, but I assure you I am tall, happy, and handsome on the inside. I am a walking contradiction. Let's get this thing started. In three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Short, Bald, and Angry Podcast. My name is Ian Cinco. This is episode 7. This week features an awesome dude who goes by the name of Deuce Ellis. Why is he so awesome? Many reasons, really. He's a, uh, he's a rapper, he's a producer, he's a performer. He started a label called Cult Classic LLC. Though I should correct myself because he prefers to call it a content creation firm. Uh, they provide a whole host of services to musicians and artists out there. You can hit him up for beats, production, top to bottom, or something in between. You can hit him up for marketing services, or he might suggest other artists you need to collaborate with. And all links are in the description. He insists you should text him, though, uh, at 808 7526 I first met Deuce at Gamba Forest. It was one of Oheni Cornelius' comedy shows, Too Many Thursdays. Uh, and real quick, I'll shout out the next, the final show of this year is coming up this Thursday, August 30th. It's 17 Division Place, 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. Of course, I got to shout out Chris Carr again and Melissa Hunter Gurney. They co-run Gamba Forest, which is putting on great shows most nights of the week. Easily one of my favorite places to be. The show Too Many Thursdays is a night that transitions between live comedy and music. And by transition, I mean repeatedly, almost tit for tat, like comedy, then music, and then more comedy, and then more music, back and forth. And both comedians and musicians have a difficult time with this transition. Not all of them can do it, but some of them can. Some of them are adept at walking the line between comedy and music, and Deuce is one of them. Even before he went up, I remember him showing support to one of the comedians who was doing squats spread out intermi intermittently through her set. And Deuce was helping her out by counting every time she went down for a squat. It's little things like that that can help make your set, if you're a performer, make it easier. Especially when the crowd is starting to wander or stray away from you. And Deuce was showing love, as they say, to his fellow performers. And, and when he takes the stage, he's also great at commanding audience attention. Not in a loud way, but he does turn up, and he might crack a joke or two, or maybe he'll tell a story. And he brings, he brings a setup with him, a drum machine, loop gear, and he builds a song live on the spot, which is something I've always loved. It's, it's super dope when an artist can bring a full sound to their live show, like a full produced sound, but, but it's only one person on stage. I've seen a handful of people master this, and it's, it's always badass. On this particular night, he asked the crowd to participate and shout out a word. Someone suggested narcissism because it had been a recurring topic that night. So we all yelled narcissism and he looped it into a song that he made live on the spot. Overall, my initial takeaway was Deuce is a mega talented guy whose music is awesome and he's got stage presence and charisma to boot and he cares about his fellow performers. I always love when performers show respect to other performers. A couple funny things happened the day we recorded this, this episode. First, as soon as I opened the door, Deuce's eyes lit up when he saw my roommate Eric Mixon. It turns out they knew each other. So we started off on a, a serendipitous note and the vibes felt right. Then for the first time since doing this show, I had a talent release form for Deuce to sign. And when he got to the signature where it says talent signature and in parentheses parent or guardian if under 18, he totally joshed me into believing he was under 18. He was like, it's okay though, my mommy says I'm mature for my age. He totally had me. Because the truth is, is you can never never tell how old people are. Some people look, look their age, but, they're, but other people look much younger or much older than they are. 
and some some old people are really immature and some young people are really mature for their age but deuce is far from underage he's a super mature even tempered artist who has obviously been working hard at his craft for years he goes into it a little bit on this episode and talks about how he had a fear of making beats but was able to overcome it it's super inspiring to hear my favorite thing to hear or moment in any creative journey is the moment where a, a big leap or a giant transformational step is taken. And it's funny because whatever, whatever it is you want to do, everything you need is already around you. It's a matter of harnessing a knowledge. But also, it's, it's really just like diving into a pool. Just do it. If you want to make beats, just do it. If you want to paint landscapes, just do it. If you want to shoot videos of you and your jackass friends pouring hot sauce and limes into your eyes, Fucking go for it. Stop waiting. I always need to take my own advice. Right now I need to take that advice, maybe now more than ever. I'm really happy with this episode, not just because I think we had a great conversation, but because we really didn't know each other at all before going into this. He's really the first guest I've had who I, I knew almost nothing about going into the, into the podcast. And, uh, and I'm glad to say it went smoothly. I want to say respect to Deuce for declaring he wants to focus more on one thing, on a thing, whether it's a monetary gain or spiritual or physical image or, or meeting the right people. That's a great way to be, and I wish him luck with that, and I hope it inspires you to do the same in your life, whatever it is you want to do. Think about it. Maybe write it down in one sentence, make it your mantra, focus on it, and make it happen. So today I want to do a quick update on six previous on the six previous guests that I had on the show. Samir Gupta should be wrapped up on his West Coast tour and returning to Brooklyn soon. I hope he had a great time out there. Tara McManus received her Class B pyrotechnician's license, which means she doesn't have to apprentice anymore. She already has she's already the fire mama of the New York fire scene, but now she can do even more spectacular things with the shows that she's a part of. And I believe now she's going to go after her Class A license. So congrats, Tara, and good luck with, with moving forward. And then Dark Matter got accepted into a grad program down in D.C. He's already moved down and started classes. Congrats on the next phase, brother. Ryan Bach. Ryan Bach successfully raised a 1,000 beans at his fundraiser to help immigrant families along our southern border. Way to go, man. I dropped by the fundraiser, and, uh, and I made it just in time to receive a shout-out as Ryan was going around the room shouting people out from behind the wall of bricks he was auctioning off. Way to go, man. That's really badass of you. And an update on last week's guest, Wheeler Preddy. He's shooting a miniseries. Uh, we didn't even talk about this on his episode. I can't wait to see what he's up to, though. I, I don't even know what this is about, what this web series is about. Can't wait to see it. And the big update this week is all about Chris Carr, or to be more exact, his, uh, his wild creation, Brooklyn Wildlife. Uh... The 2018 Brooklyn Wildlife Summer Festival kicks off this Friday, August 31st, at Trans Picos, and runs till September 9th. The festival includes over 150 acts, which I literally just finished handwriting and touching up last night. I like it was crazy. I literally brush penned the name of over of every performer and touched each name up individually for the poster designs. It was totally crazy. But I'm uh, I'm super pumped for this festival and, and proud to be a part of it. Chris's really a glue that brings together and holds together a large community performing artists. I feel like I'm a part of a cultural movement that's happening, and I'm lucky to be hanging out with so many talented artists. I hope to have them all on this podcast. This week is going to be crazy for me. I'm, I hope to be selling my art at all the shows, but I am in the middle of moving. Luckily, I'm not moving far away, but I have a lot of stuff, and moving is always a pain in the ass. But yeah, like I said, despite the move and despite the fact that I want to get next, next week's episode out on time, I intend to be at as many of the Brooklyn Wildlife Summer Festival events as I can. Let me know if you want to come out to any of them. Come keep me company. Buy me a beer or buy my book. I'm trying to avoid being a starving artist and I need your support. And speaking of your support, please head over to my Patreon and consider donating to me. I'm not asking for a lot from you. Jump in at the $1 per post level, and you will receive a presidential twat sticker. Uh, and recommend my work and, and my Patreon to, all, to other people, especially people who love art. Spread me around like Cinco Butter. I'm a savory treat when spread on toast or bagels or whatever you like to eat. I think I go well with any meal. And a beer, perhaps some wine. Definitely smoke a bowl, a joint, maybe take, maybe take some shrooms. 
sit back and enjoy my work. Before we jump into this week's awesome episode, I just want to shout out next week's guests, Chocolate Brown and Solomonophonic Sound. We had a fun talk, followed by a Beyond Dope live in-studio performance. I'm going to make that a regular thing on the show. If you're a musician and you want to come on the show, I will feature your music as well. So hit me up at ian.studiosynco at gmail.com. Remember, all links are in the description, in the bio. Click on them, check it all out, donate to my Patreon, check out Deuce's music, and come out to Brooklyn Wildlife Summer Festival, August 31st to September 9th. Deuce performs Monday, September 3rd at Tilt. That's Labor Day. Come on out, y'all. Oh, I almost forgot. Deuce just got engaged just this past week. Congrats on that, man. All right. Where are we at? Almost 11-minute intro. Again, not so bad. I'm pretty good at this. And you know if, if you don't... If this thing bugs you, you can always skip ahead. But here we go. We're about to begin. I'm super psyched this... This week to present you the mega talented and super cool Deuce Ellis. Please enjoy. Literally babies their their offspring the way like humans do. Like like we baby our offspring until they're damn near fucking eighteen. Like You know what I mean? Like at some point most other animals and like kids are more intelligent than we give them credit for, like like if you l- just throw them in a, a room together, let them hurt each other, they'll learn. They'll they'll figure it out. Learn from it and figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Way more than like instilling things like being timid, or like our own dogmas on them. Yeah. Cause that that's that's like definitely the other thing is like they're really really moldable. I think that's why I, you sometimes tend to, like if I don't like the people and then they have a kid, you can instantly tell that like their like assholeness has already started to rub off on the kid sometimes it works the opposite way like parents are assholes and then the kid is like an angel yeah in response but you know when it's a baby it's just annoying all right let's talk about cooler stuff yeah so. let me let me get you to uh move this out of the way and you can just just you know how, to, how it works right just yeah talk directly into that mic let me, we, do you want to adjust it at all um you want it like closer is that better yeah that's that's fine am i getting good levels that's what's yeah i'm gonna most important yeah let's do some talking hey Talk hey to me. um who trying to go rei on friday buy tents camp out on a nyc rooftop on saturday sounds fun and return them johns on sat sunday that's that's what uh that's, That's a life hack in corporate America, man. Yeah, just go rent tents, uh, go camp, and then return the tents. You know, uh, photo. Sh- you know, B and H. No, what's B and H? It's like the photo video store, the, like the huge Jewish-owned photo video store in the city. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm not allowed to return anything there ever again. And every time I buy something, they they have to like promise I'm not going to return it because I did that for years. Ah. That's how I made a lot of my videos. I just. Bought, sh- bought shit and returned it after the shoot like, was over. Hey, I don't really want this anymore. They figured it out. They caught on. You know... I figured they would eventually. I mean, what do they lose? Out of their return? Yeah. Do they... Do, I thought the company takes a loss. Like, whoever makes this shit, like the manufacturer. I'm not sure how, how their business is run. Yeah, it yeah, it yeah. seems pretty mysterious. If you go... You gotta check it out. They have these conveyor belts. You don't really touch anything until you walk out of the store. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow, they've gotten really good with it. Yo, it's the crazy. last time, um, uh, I remember like when they still sold CDs there back in the days. I like fucked around and I had, they had the Joe Button CD, like his debut CD, which was titled Joe Button. And they had Tupac's Hail Mary CD. And I rolled the dice and I got the Joe Button album and it was really, really fucking dope. <laughs> it really, yo, Joe Button's first album is so dope. I'm not familiar with Joe Button. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, or check out his podcast, because he podcasts now. His podcast is pretty cool, too. But that first album that he did, man, was so dope. And that's why you got to be careful with, like, major labels and shit. Because um, I don't think his label handled his situation right or recognized what they had or, like, the fan base that was actually cultivated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is, we'll segue into, I got something that we're doing. Yeah, um, you were just telling me you started a label. 
Well, that too. I, I started. I hate calling it a label because that's such a shitty label. A label, but um, I mean, a content creation firm is like the the fancy shit I put on paper. Yeah. Really, just because like there's a dope pe- group of people who create shit beyond like music or you know video or like you know what I mean. So just I just wanted to give people free reign to really really express themselves and then um kind of a platform and the resources to market and promote that and make sure that not only are they able to create great work but they're able to get that in front of eyes that would connect with the work and so one of the things um i heard this ryan leslie interview and i decided to check out his software superphone where he was like after his first album right um it so like let's say a hundred eighty thousand copies or whatever the next album when it came out in the first week only sold sixty thousand copies and that made him go like well to his label and be like hey didn't y'all talk to the first hundred eighty thousand that brought it and loved it and let them know that another one was coming and it was like nah and he was like who has that information and like itunes and like itunes doesn't tell you who buys your shit when it sells so like how can you build there's no it? you can't you don't get that information no really no you get numbers on what you sold that they keep that information yeah. which is why you're able to but they don't tell you anything like demographic nothing nothing at all maybe where on the map but like i mean like imagine how dope it is to be able to email somebody thank you right and what that does because i mean like all forms of commerce are relationships and especially like us as people who like make creative stuff like yeah. the only way or value that our creativity has is its impact on the world and it's, it's reaching eyes like that's literally how people pay almost is with their that's why it's called pay attention like that's how people right. pay is by like giving our art attention that's what i'm saying to everybody right now it's like just just let me know you're listening throw me a comment even you know yeah man because yeah the metric you don't we don't really know who's even paying attention out there half the time but imagine if you had a means of knowing that and right. of keeping in touch with those people who pay attention and then being able to you know what i mean like on their birthday hey man happy birthday yeah from the artist that you here's a drawing for, you know what i mean or like yeah. whatever you as a creative found like great ways of communicating with your tribe right and building like you know that group of people who support you because like you know the cult classics theory that we operate under is that thousand fan principle as opposed yeah. to like aiming for the you know the 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 short tell and trying to hit a million people like we'd rather find like a thousand diehard yeah for each project that's willing to put in you know a hundred dollars of their own a thousand dollars of their own because we make a product that's that quality and because they know that it speaks to them as opposed to us trying to like talk to all of the masses you know that's Um, where we're at so yeah and the internet's dope because it allows you you know i mean to speak to like people's interests as opposed like you know what you know how the music game industry worked originally was because it was so expensive to make and cut a record that was the real reason why labels went after the lowest common denominator or like what they would perceive as like because they had so much money to recoup off the rip they they didn't want to take there was a high risk yeah high risk produces uh low risk artistic uh production so now the cost of making and distributing music to people is like uh, damn near nil yeah i mean i mean you once you've invested in like your equipment and like you're going like you just have to then like put pedal to the metal at this point i think the money that needs to be spent is uh you know you there's there's an aspect to production and the art making you bring it up to a higher level that you probably do want to spend money on but it really comes into marketing and promo and that kind of shit that's where that, uh, that I'm kind of like higher quality. Are you uh, are you knowledgeable on that side and yeah. promo and everything? Yeah, yeah, we're really hungry for that. Like I said, part of a huge part of um, Cult Classics LLC stance is that we give the best and most like high tech and direct to fan forms of marketing, and like that's really just like finding ways for when people make great content, when they make a dope song, when they put together an awesome video or they they draw something amazing like that's really just being able to figure out how to get it in front of eyes and how to 
how to get people excited about it and and moving with it so thank you sir um you know and then in this digital space like it's really dope because like there's means to just reaching millions of eyes quickly like um i mean even though it's already it's it's getting more and more flooded just because of the way that you're able you know what i mean to work with the algorithm marketing on facebook is still and the fact that everybody's doing it i mean but that's like i don't even really sign in for the timeline i sign in for the advertisements because like they're tailored to shit that i like like right now all i get is like free vst plugins you know what i mean like sign up your email for our email list and we'll send you like this these sounds or these drum packs or like i mostly have i've been getting yeah the algorithm is definitely tailoring to me i'm seeing a lot of things i want to buy yeah but uh i have an adverse reaction to all that shit i get kind of angry and pissed off usually no nah, no nah, i'm with it but, I, like, but i've been definitely like tagging some things i'm like oh i'm gonna buy that later though yeah <laughs> i like that they, they know me, what i want it. for me like like, you know, it was a dope thing. Like, there was the Brooklyn um, Synthesizer um, Expo a couple of weeks, like, a month ago. And, like, there was advertisement for it. And, like, it was, like, the Brooklyn Synth Expo. Are you kidding me? Like, my inner nerd was, like, alive. And, like, how else? Where else? Because marketing, again, is just getting in front of where people's eyes are. So, like, especially if eyes aren't on, you know, uh, terrestrial TV anymore which is where people's attention used to be so then right. you put a commercial there and you put it during like you know kids cartoon hours and you put a commercial for a kid's toy then you know you're probably gonna have kids who like this toy watching at this time so like it increases your chance of selling that's all marketing is right yeah. so when i see like new ways now of like like youtube video is probably one of the dopest that like is still slept on but i mean like you can advertise on hulu now you can advertise on spotify like doing you know like voice drops so like and then you know new york city is a canvas if you can figure out ways to like spread your message yeah um whether it's like you remember, you remember like the airplanes that used to fly across the sky and they'd have like a banner oh yeah they're still waving. out there yeah like, yeah yeah like that's, that's a summer vibe thing for sure but it's one of maybe i don't leave the apartment enough i don't see it that often but i, I think i saw one last week i was at the beach yeah it's probably dying down now <laughs> they probably just send you a text message because they're like yo that's how how much does that cost In instagram <laughs> buddy come on like come on <laughs> so you could post a picture on ig and it doesn't cost us nothing so. right but yeah. i want the plane the client wants the plane yo man so speaking of getting getting stuff out there like who are you man and what are you getting out there these days all right um for those who don't know thank you ian for having me here thanks for coming um on. i am deuce ellis and i'm a guy um what are, what are we marketing now we came here today to um a acid motorcycle is the first official release from like starting this company um and you know, it was also, so I started the company and we built the studio and I wasn't planning on building a studio. Like we had a smaller space. Where is but, it? Uh, it's in the heart of Bed-Stuy. Nice. Uh, Tompkins. And I'm also going to tell you, if anyone is interested at any point, you can text me as you're listening. 808-400-7526. 808 For production? Oh, for whatever. Like if we want to get beats if you want to sign to the label if you just want our marketing services if you just want to like chill and smoke a blunt with me and possibly pick my brain nice yeah man i might need some help mixing podcasts it's kind of difficult i, th I had a good lesson check, check. from my old roommate last night i think i got it down finally really really what yeah. software do you use to mix podcasts down on well i mean there's probably smarter stuff to use but i'm trying to keep it all in premiere because there's a video component to this podcast so i'm uh -huh. just like how, i, I want to keep like applications to one if yeah, possible no nah, no nah, nah, that's i think i got it but i don't know I, i'll have another i have another like mix master guru friend coming over to he i forget what the program is he's going to recommend to me but yeah but yeah, so Acid Motorcycle, um, you know, I, I do production as well. Probably when we left to go to Hawaii, it was like this kind of ninja mission of mine that like I would be on this island and master learning how to produce. I had traveled the world rapping and was always like afraid or like psych myself out from like, and I really, really wanted to do that. So 
To what? Travel the world? No, no, to make beats. To make beats. Yeah, you were yeah. afraid of making beats, huh? Yeah, yeah, for a while. Or like, I don't know. It was just that's in, that's awesome because now you're sick. Yeah, I <laughs> now really you do just, it live. Yeah, I really, really got immersed in it, and like, I knew. You know what I mean? It was just one of those things I always wanted to, but like. I don't know, growing up and being poor and shit, my parents were always like, we'll get you a keyboard for Christmas. And then, like, they'd be like, sorry, we couldn't get you a keyboard for Christmas. So, like, mm -hmm. but then I got a keyboard, like, on my own, like, as an adult. And it sat in my apartment for, like, a year, right? And then um, I didn't realize that, like, somebody had left a laptop and was like, yo, dude, you could use this. Like, whatever, I don't care. And it happened to have software on it. So one day I just happened to, like, open the computer and see the software for music recording like i didn't i never paid attention to it and like the keyboard was there collecting dust and the laptop was there collecting dust and then like one day it was just like boom and it was just a shitty little keyboard on a shitty laptop but it had like a, a cracked version of logic 9 and nice. like that was like okay and i made something and it sounded decent and i was like all right and then i just started consuming every like interview of every dope producer that i could every piece of footage of them in the studio who are some um, of your favorites man <sighs> it's a long list yeah um but all, all, all ultimately like the first name that'll always come to mind is probably rizza okay um he mastered sound and taught me the the speed that sound travels at which is 1028 uh feet per second it's a, it's a little it's a little bit more than that. It's the wave, but yeah, but that's how fast sound travels from one location to the other. That's the speed of sound, um, and it was just something in his aura. You could tell, like I seen, because you know it, you can be great at anything that a you have a desire to be great at. Um, you can be really really decent at anything that you have to do. You know what I mean? Like like you, it, oh, repetition is put the in father the hours. running. Yeah, if you put in the hours, so like. But I seen the joy of putting in the hours towards this. Like I felt it, like through his craft, and I was like, "You can just hear it." I I want to put it in my hours, like <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean. Like it's you know like the, the work didn't seem like work. It seemed like, geez, I can't wait. I can't do this work fast enough, like yeah. to to earn whatever comes at like you know. It's like the Thirty Six Chambers, though. If you've ever seen that movie, the Thirty Six Chambers of Shaolin, and like you do not in in the movie, the character like wants to master um, martial arts, and you know you have to go through each chamber and you develop skill leading up to the top and when he first comes in he's like yo i want to go straight to the top chamber and learn what they're teaching up there and like he, a young grasshopper doesn't work like that it, the, he's not even ready to comprehend that knowledge up there like they don't even fight in that chamber anymore right. because they've surpassed the need to fight right but um so I, I like going through the process was like a lot of joy and like um, I would go on these like adventures in Hawaii. I would like drop a tab and ride my bicycle to like the end of the island or like just a remote part or like up Which in the islands. Uh, we were on Oahu. Okay. Um, and you sounds know, uh, spiritual. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to figure out who I was or wanted to be or could be or you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and then it stopped being about like s substance and more about like what was that you know what i mean like like there was points where like i'll never forget this is one night where like i was out i i would i could see it like when i still was taking the bus and i could see like this point out like on the island that it looked like really really unreachable but remote and like dope on the water and like it, it seemed like so like i like remembered where it was from like the bus and like traced what stop would be closest to it and i took my bike and like rode over and like adventured through there and like finally like i had to like leave my bike in a spot and like hop across some rocks but it was just this like dope like man-made platform like damn near in the middle not in the middle middle of the ocean but far enough out from the coast that like you were surrounded by water and I like just hopped there and I like, you know, had some blunts pre rolled and like it was just me and like the sun had like perfectly set and the stars cracked. It was just it was just one of the most like awesome like experience and like like it was just like you really appreciate too seeing like the master artists that were you know what I mean? Like just like damn, when was the last time I looked up and just witnessed this show like not you know like and i love netflix i love like hulu you know what i mean but like when was the last time i just looked at like 
this is more entertaining and like mind blowing than like sunrises or just nature and period. It's nature period, but it wasn't a sun. It was or it sun, was the sunset, I mean. it was the moonrise. The moonrise, like, like yeah. the sun had, had finished setting and like all this. It was that point where like all the stars just like right burst out and like on we that don't part get that of the, here in the city but i know what you're talking about man yeah and that was why i wanted two things that like had really drained me here was that i couldn't see stars here yeah and it was i could never get quiet yeah and, like i really really wanted those two things and like i didn't realize it too at that moment but that was one of those moments was like yo both so, i have like speaking of quiet there's a something loud flying overhead right now yeah i mean <laughs> that's that's the music of new york though like yeah. like sonically or like sound wise like i'll never run out of like sound ideas because oh, yeah. i'm sitting in the studio quiet and like you just hear let's go record that engine the, or something just yeah. the sound of the city going by is just like inspiration is all it, it has a music to itself too, yeah you know um, when i'm not in the city though i sleep i sleep pretty solid i don't really have sleeping problems necessarily but uh you know when i'm out of the city i sleep like a rock it's crazy no, i grew so up quiet out there i grew up here like my whole life and the first time that i went somewhere quiet it's like 16 17 i was in connecticut was it eerie i couldn't sleep it was it so, throws you off right I, it was so quiet and like i didn't realize that like my lullaby at night was like sirens and, and car alarms and screeches and people's conversations the quiet's weird it like brings out other thoughts and then you can't sleep because you're just your mind is racing right or, or not just, it wasn't that it was just like i had never like actually gotten like the experience of like nighttime quiet like like just like yo like you know what i mean like i, I was anticipating something more so like because like new york puts you in a certain like yeah con you know what i mean there's yeah i think and like if you're in an apartment like there's somebody above you to the right of you to the left of you and beneath you at all times so like you're constantly feeling like energy around you that you're ready to kind of you know respond to even just subconsciously like tune out a siren or whatever so like when there was like no stimuli i don't know it took me like some time to just be like yo Phew. and like even still like now i just play like waterfall that's what i started playing like waterfall noises or like it's always a funny thing that's shit. that's like I, I find it easier to fall asleep with that stuff too man we uh we need we need a little something we need the lullaby we need the hum um, well see and then when i was when i was in hawaii we lived um pretty close to the ocean so that was what i heard at night and that was like the most amazing thing to fall asleep to it was like to oh, yeah. just hear the ocean waves crashing yeah. like that because it it's rhythmic as fuck like just natural totally. <laughs> and then um the part of the island that we well, we, li we like lived all across but one of the parts of the island that we lived on every morning every morning every single morning it rained like yeah. just a light shower a tropical environment yeah and on, on like just that like section of the island too but like that was how i knew to wake up too is i would hear that like gentle morning rain and like all the birds would start singing and, and like yo that was some of the most so peaceful it sounds up. like you were in paradise for a while why'd you come back um two things i mean yeah there are elements of it it's like expensive that. down there right it's really expensive um and it's also like there's a lot of parts that are really American and like don't feel like Hawaii at all. Oh man. Um, I need to and go then, visit. I've never been. Yeah, I, I would know, say. I know that's going to disappoint me. No, no, I would say visit and, and learn more so than. Because that was the other thing is there's so many people starting to move, like outside people. And like you get it because why wouldn't you go for the dream of paradise? But then, like, when there's too many people there, it suddenly stops being. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. like it, it. So there was elements to that. There were some medical things that popped up, and the medicine, the medical there isn't as, um, because I'm. Or, you gotta think like it takes that much longer for supplies or anything to like reach the island. So like, even times where like if it's heavy, heavy rain for like a week where they have to cancel ships, you'll see like the shelves at like Walmart start being light until like another shipment That's comes it. in. It's like a like a yeah. hurricane hitting here. Um, I mean, no, nah, when hurricane hits, like, it's... Down there. Yeah, like... Yeah, no, it's next level. You you stock up. And, like, everybody stocks up. So, like, if you go to, like, the store, like, the days after... You were there like, during hurricane? hurricane? Um, yeah, we had some hurricane. So, there's... I'll tell you this really dope statement, though. Um, because there's a lot of spiritual people on the island. And, like, right. there's a handful of monasteries with monks and just... So, there's this joke about Oahu in particular. There's always these huge storms that could, like 
end the island or like li- you know what i mean like su- significantly alter like the lifestyle of the, like the entire island right and like there's always like this is it this is the one and like we were there long enough to have seen like at least four of those moments where like everybody went and like costco walmarted up and like was ready and you know what i mean had like provisions and shit but there's this joke that like the monks and all the spiritual people pray and so the hurricanes always dodge the island and they never actually hit and like that was what ha- i've seen it happen like four times where it was like yo dudes this might be the one and like i think the worst was just that it rained for like four or five days straight and like the rain was vicious but we didn't get hit with like the mamalo tornado we got like a side piece of it and we were just like Psh. lucked out dodge yeah. the bullet yeah we just didn't have to go to work yeah <laughs> like and you know what i mean like there were elements of it that were really really dope so you were um, down there working too you had a job when um, you were down there i mean you were there for a while yeah 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 we we hustled yeah. or whatever we figured it out yeah um and then the first thing that we did off the airplane actually was we sold kirby vacuums kirby vacuums it found it straight off craigslist and it was like yo this is like I don't know, they had like a great Craigslist pitch and they're like, yo, no experience necessary. And then we got there and they bust <laughs> out the Kirby vacuum. But I sold the shit out like of it. Like door to door? Yeah, yeah. I sold the shit out of like a Kirby vacuum for the time that I did it. Like, And then... Um, did you use like your talents? Did you like knock on doors and rhyme and rap and shit? Nah, no? nah just the... It was like that viral video of the guy, I forget what he's selling. You know yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. No, they they used to show like we watched those like while we were training like as we were showing because like um, actually no I learned about him when I started selling cars. So one of the houses that I was in, I'm doing this vacuum presentation, and she's like, "Yo, you're really dope, but the money's not in this." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? You know what I mean?" They told me, and she's like, "Sell cars, it's so much easier, and I can get you hooked up." And so like I sold her on giving me a job, and she got me like a dope ass gig um slinging cars and like they paid for like everything and like hooked me up with some wheels and then i was like all right i'm gonna keep pursuing my music actually i mean i really really appreciated them but in hindsight it may have appeared assholeish because like i had the car for like a month or two and i was like all right peace i'm out (laughs) <laughs> I mean, but i mean like we are I, artists man we gotta pursue our yeah our and i had sold so mad choice. cars i had broke some records and like won some like awards and shit and it was like it was cool like you, you got know a plaque I mean? yeah you got, like the yeah. Your name on the plaque and everything yeah 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 i left okay. my mark like nice yeah you know i mean if somebody beats that record good for them because <laughs> they'll just get that money but like yeah it was it was um I mean, like, it was just a thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it was a cool period. Because there was some dope people there. That's I think that's one of the things. Like, anywhere that you work is really the people more so than, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean... Totally agree. Especially as artists. Because, like, we're like, yo, we'll do something for money so that we can keep yeah, we're, making it's, Our life obviously isn't dedicated to that thing. Well, and, and, like, that's also... But that's also why, like, there are sometimes more difficult paths in terms of finding... Because, like we could commit to you know what i mean like if we wanted to commit to like putting all our energy into like a field like you know what i mean like a job yeah. job we would but the artist is like no i i just want something to do while i do this i have a mentality where i try to do the best i can at whatever job i have but but there always reaches a level where there's like that's that's never going to be the thing i'm trying to do so it's like it and, ends up being like i'm deceiving myself into or one of the the interesting things and i get it because companies, you know, understand how to, they, they start doing research on how to get the most out of their employees and have the best environment or whatever. But certain companies start wanting you to be so into their culture. Yeah. And into their philosophy. Oh, uh, when it starts getting cultish and you got to wear shirts and stuff like that. So that's where I start, <laughs> like, squirming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always, like, like, if somebody throws me a shirt I have to wear, I'm like, uh, how, do I, how do I get out of this? Yeah, I don't know. like, I can't. Is there, like, a remix to this shirt that I could bring in? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that's my own. Or, or, like, wait a second. I'm an artist. Let me make a better shirt because usually they fucking look ugly as all hell. <laughs> you know, so all of that was, like, why I, there were great people there. And for, like... The story that I, I had portrayed of, like, yo, I'm new to the island and I'm down to do whatever, like, they were like, cool, here's everything that you could need. Here's upfront. Here's every opportunity for bonus. And I just worked. You know yeah. what I mean? And then there was a point where I had a car 
and I was like building a small little studio there and like I started doing lift in Hawaii which was like the dopest thing that I ever did because all I did was just drive around the island and like it's pretty beautiful and you get I, to see a lot of stuff and meet people yeah that was Talking i was like LP. yeah that, that's a cool part of the gig right especially if you're interested in people yeah well meet i mean all kinds of people you gotta think about the people who would be there in hawaii taking lift rides yeah at that time too because it was still like a kind of new concept or whatever so like it was a lot of dope forward thinking and people who like either had right. dope money to be on the island or like dope ass stories of like so they were all interesting people yeah and that was like really really cool and then like it, it just worked because like a design you know like schedule around like being able to like mostly work on music so it was cool that's um, awesome man but hunger for the rest of the world there's a thing called island fever and we'll 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 kind of end with that like yeah oahu is what like 50 miles from end to end wow um so at a point where you've like seen everything there there was this feel i'll never i like i remember the feeling when like i had like there was like a storm and we had gone all over the island and it was like yeah you're not going anywhere for like a couple of days it's just like yo i'm really on a really small rock far away from everything it's like cabin that. fever only it's island fever yeah, yeah yeah like i need to get, get some off of this yeah 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 and like like my girl they probably have ferries that go between the islands right not anymore the airline shut it down they what? mafiaed that shit there's no there's no fucking ferry anymore because they're um, I mean, like, flights fr to the other islands are cool, but it's are they still... affordable, at least? Yeah. That's cool. Enough, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's probably, like, 100 bucks. Yeah. If you find, like... And then there are, like, private little companies. You do it for, like, you gotta find, like 35 to you 60. You got to be, become friends with, like, fishermen or something like that. One of my best I friends a, is a fisherman down there. I had a fisherman homie who rode us a couple of times to Kauai, yeah. which was chill. Um, but, you know... Even even still, it's it's an inescapable feeling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. cause you're like, all right, this. Is, you know what I mean? But like, and it's it's weird. But like, I just missed like elements of like New York and like yeah, man. Like, I'm still a city kid. I yeah. still like a corner store on every corner. Yeah, everywhere that I go. <laughs> even if they're all gourmet delis now. <laughs> I kind of like that shit, cause I'm I'm vegan. You're healthy. Yeah. You're vegan. Ish. Veganish, yeah, yeah. Um, if they don't have vegan cheese, or they they're all sold out, I will eat the regular cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that that's no meat. Uh, no meat. No, I have. I stopped eating meat though, like long time ago. I did this cleanse, and it was chill. Cool, man. Yeah, um, I'm going through a cleanse. I'm on a keto diet, which is the opposite of what you're doing. It's really, like nothing but meat. Nothing but. But meat. I did a juice cleanse first interesting i had to change my life around but yeah i'm not i'm not like a super meat eater i'm just like trying it and no, when it's no, over no, i'll probably cool. never do this one again i'm gonna stick to some other diet what was what was the the idea behind it just because i'm interested it was uh it was in my mind for a long time but uh, i just woke up at like a rock bottom i was like today's the day i'm juice cleansing no no i mean the the nothing but meat diet like what's the idea behind that yeah oh well it's like ketosis it's called the keto diet if you eat nothing but if you eat no carbs, no sugar, and nothing but meat and a lot of fat, your body switches to a different metabolic state and it doesn't store fat, it burns it right away as energy. But you got to have zero carbs and zero sugar. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah, it's it's like I I think it's like a cleanse diet. It's definitely not like a a year diet. It's kind of like people drink butter on this diet. That can't be good. Like it, I, I just find myself to like consume any type of fat fatty yeah i have this like piss test for the keto thing and like my ketones are always low so i'm like fuck i'm, I'm about to like pour butter on on this meal it's ridiculous it's not uh, not sustain i don't think it's sustainable okay but um i don't I know some people the, do it year round the no carbs i mean you do need some sugars yeah carbs i mean fruit and vegetables i want to be eating those like yeah, the fact that's... that i haven't been eating those for months now or like a month and a half is ridiculous wow yeah yeah i don't i couldn't do it it's not good I couldn't do I don't, it. I don't totally, I'm not totally selling the keto diet right now. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel any different, better, worse? I feel 100% right now, man, compared to where I was when I started this shit. I feel great. Yeah. Okay. More energy, my mental clarity, so happier. Your body, well, because like. Better physical shape than I've been in years. I, I did learn this, that like, um, 
our body's chemistry is malleable but also everything and like you can mentally shift like the yeah. inner chemistry and like you could change like there are people who are unattractive because the chemicals that they emit like that you know what i mean like their thoughts and then their body chemicals emit unattraction like yeah and the, i don't know if it's, it's pheromones i think it's related to the they, they talk about the gut a lot you know it's like your gut bacteria makes you depressed and then you're like yeah it affects everything and then you just kind of matter of fact if you've ever gone inside of like a really depressed person's like room when they're deep in it you can almost like taste it in the feel air it. like feel it yeah oh yeah man and and then the opposite if you've like We're empathetic I, creatures we feel each other you know when i walked in here i felt like good energy i was like okay yeah, yeah. You well it turns I mean? out you're you know my roommate that's hilarious man which is another like serendipity. small world yeah yeah and no it's not just that i guess it's that i couldn't figure out because his facebook name is different than his right. actual name right and i was like i don't remember what the facebook name <laughs> was but i've been meaning it, like i was literally you like i thought about him like a couple of days before this so like that's just one of those like cool man thing you know what i mean it's meant to be yeah and just that you you like if you think about people they'll start to appear or whatever like yeah. whatever you think about oh that happens all the time yeah you, you, you think about someone you start you see him twice in a row that's usually the way it works for me it's like you again have, I have this thing where, like, if I hear a new word or an interesting word, I'll hear it in one scenario, and then within, like, a five-hour period, hear that same new interesting word, like, two more times, and I'm like, yes, that is, totally. a, that is a thing now. And then it starts to sink in, and then you start repeating it, <laughs> and then you spread it. Yeah. It's a great... It's a... I, you know, I've always been interested, the, the earlier... Our earlier predecessors or whatever, because they had more time... To just sit and like think and like figure these things out. Like, what what were they piecing together? Because there's something that we're supposed to be able to do with all of this, or like more more directed, more controlled. That that was what I was obsessed with too. On the island was like, oh my bad. That was what I was obsessed with on the island was like, you know, if I can, can I do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the mic moves with me. <laughs> yeah, just kiss the mic, man. But um. Back to the music too, man. Yeah, let's let's. I don't think we finished really talking about uh, acid motorcycles. I want to hear more about it, man. Yeah, I, I've been listening to the song. It's a song. Yeah, right? it's a song. It's a single. Yeah, it's a single. Um, it's awesome. Although, so I was with a, a label a few years back, and I had always had this philosophy. And this was kind of where we we had disparity, and I left that scenario. Was I had the philosophy of like treating songs kind of like an album in terms of how. You push it and present it to the world like it should feel big, especially because I was aware that like it's going to become more of a singles driven world anyways. And people don't have as much attention all the time to focus on like a full body of work, especially when you're trying to draw people in. So it was like the yeah. fans don't have the time you're saying. Yeah. Or like especially when you're like introducing like new art you want to give everything a certain like breath so that was the philosophy that we took for cult classics was to yeah. like attempt to like just push this with all the force of it being like a full project and kind of roll out our philosophy too of how we want to share music it I, we wanted to be more direct to fan we didn't immediately release the music on um spotify or title or the like the big three apple music and shit um what's we start what's the other thing i'm listening to your music on tune tune um, i've never heard of that that's new to me yeah it's um it was it was started by this dope um dj from overseas gareth emery um and i just i really like the philosophy behind it they pay what is it like 10 to 100 times more than spotify pays out and um you, you mean know, they pay the artist yeah yeah the artist directly every day it's almost annoying, but it's one of the cutest things is I get an email every day that says, hey, your music has made you this much money. Um, <laughs> and they pay out in cryptocurrency that you can convert to cash. Um, and then it's really... Yeah, you're, in, you're in on all that. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, this is happening. And, like, other artists, like, check it out, sign up. And then, like, it's, it's dope for the listeners, too, because when, like, you know, you know like, people make these playlists on like you know spotify or whatever and then they share the playlist and like their friends hear it and like streams and money are generated but none of that goes um 
to the fan who's like the curator who's like the one almost responsible for making this this art like popular so what chun offers is um you can as the artist designate how much of a split you want to give your fans when they share your music so like it starts off at like five percent of whatever their shares earn you know like when they like when they share the music on a playlist they get five percent or more of that from the artists and then they can cash that out and have that as you know money in their pocket so the fans yeah the fans benefit from tune as well as the artists and like i said it's it's just we i, I wanted to that's crazy. launch this company being really really future forward so like I said, again, you can if you want to hear the song, just text me, 808-400-7526. And I'm throwing all links in the description. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's how we do it here. Yeah, and, um, you know, like, it's, it's cool because it's... It's very dope. It's fucking awesome, man. It's, um, we got the technology set up. If you, if you send the text, you'll, you'll get a little form, and it'll immediately send you the track link so that you can hear it. Nice, man. And, I and mean... You, you were saying that you treated that song, like the one song is an album is that what you were saying no i mean just in terms of like the energy and the rollout right. and, yeah and then you know it's an instead awesome of just being like a uh, little song or whatever it's like yo let's give this like you know a hundred percent attention and energy um i forget who it was but it was the other night at gamba one of the performers was like i forget what happened they had a short set and they were like we, got th- we had to throw all our best shit right at the beginning i was like but you should do that the whole time, like, right, you should yeah. do that always, and if it's long, then have even better shit after, right? Like, that's, you, yeah. that's the sort of approach I think everybody needs to have. Yeah, so we just wanted to, like, really, really... This is going to break. Um, no, 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 it's, it's cool. I'll follow it down. No, it's... Oh, I, I got, see. I got to pull it back. It's actually breaking. Oh, oh, no, we don't want that. Cheap gear, man. Hey, we, we work with... Now? I got it. If I... If I gotta, if I gotta get up off my lazy ass too, don't. No. It's totally breaking. No, you're you're good. Just just you gotta lean into it. Gotcha. It's all yeah, good. These things were hot. I have very cheap uh, mic stands. Um, gotta buy new ones maybe. I guess they weren't made in America. <laughs> <laughs> that's my only. That's my only. You know what? Um. For for all the shit that America does get, cause it's it's in a. I think it's just in an asshole phase in general as a country, and I won't get super political. It's still a pretty great place to live if you've been other places. Like it's, I think I think it's always had that that like asshole aspect because we had George Bush was a real asshole, both both of them, but yeah, but Junior was a real dumb motherfucker. Oh yeah, no, and we, like you know, and now we're now we're back to a dumb motherfucker for a president. No, I mean like we've been assholes since like World War Two at least like. Since I mean, we I mean, like, yeah, you, have, you have to distinguish between the people in the government and yeah. the military industrial complex, which is not us. Those assholes, that's, that's not me or my family. No, no, no. And I don't support that, even though technically tax money goes to it. Um, I, just, I just think... And I, like I said, but I then that, the, the people can be assholes. So there's the asshole people. And the, but I think there's a majority of great people across the country. No, that's what I was saying. Like, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great place with great people. Mm-hmm. But we are, we're, we're probably really lazy on the revolutionary front because... <laughs> I mean, all in all, we got I mean, a decent got thing Instagram, going. We got Facebook, we got Netflix, we got a lot of. That's what I'm saying. Like, Deuce is making great music, and we're just like we're just listening to it, you know. It's like, yeah, <laughs> do we really want to like shut that shit down? <laughs> no, no. I think, I think that's. I think, I think the the one bit that the world does respect us for is that is our culture, you know. No, no. That if if we have provided nothing else constantly, we are the entertainment capital of the of the planet and you and you gotta think of it as a beacon of hope too like yeah shit's really bad around the globe and even even at home there's a lot of bad shit happening even here at home but if if there is anything to look forward to it's or hope we got there's any hope it's the people who are making art the people who are you know producing culture and stuff yes we're the hope for the rest of the world man and you know you gotta remember no matter what like the the game is always just towards whoever can figure it out yeah or figure you know what i mean because like like you can you can paint the world's most amazing painting you can make a sex tape you could paint a shitty painting and be famous for painting a shitty painting but make enough notoriety to finally figure out you know what i mean like there's so many weird loopholes and ways you just gotta love what you do and like 
I think be good to people. That's that's it. I agree. Um, but yo, I I wrote down. Uh, I think I heard it in one of your songs. It was uh, what was it? Spread love and music, and if they don't if they don't like it, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. The New ears. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. You know, that's a beautiful way of putting it, right? It's like you know, it's always because like that's the duality of man i think that's one thing that's probably not like really addressed or that we get to deal with and it causes problems because like we all have like our other sides our darker sides or like the need to express both no one is completely good nor bad um we would all do some horrible things if the scenario justified it. Everybody's cool with, like, if someone killed your loved one that you killed them. Like, that's, that, you know what I mean? Like, killing's not cool, but if someone kills your loved one, you can kill them. Like, that's kind of like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, our heart goes out to that person because it's, like, yeah, one of the scariest evil things you can imagine. Yeah, but, like. Take redemption. Yeah, but, like, no one's. But the revenge plot. If the revenge plot in movies and literature teaches us nothing, it's a dangerous path to go down. Yeah, but w- <laughs> I guess what I'm just saying, like, the pathology of, like, you know, there are scenarios where everything that is bad is not so bad or maybe even, like, cool. Yeah. So, like, you know. And some things that are good aren't ain't so great. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you see, like, maybe certain really religious households where it's, like, that seems great on the surface, but then, like, they're really repressing children or, mm-hmm. you know, stifling creativity. So, like, you know, like I said, there's nothing is neither completely good nor bad, but, like, we do probably uh, would be served better to embrace an understanding of that duality so that there's less confusion yeah. amongst amongst people, especially when, like, kids are young and they're figuring it out. Because kids, kids are really aware that they get lied to at some point. They're like, yo. They do become aware. This is not just I mean, you got to remember, this is a a world or especially in this country where like we are from jump like parents are like, yo, it is cool to tell this lie to your kids. Think about every parent damn near America. All religion you're talking about? No, no, not even the Santa Claus lie. Santa Claus lie. Which is even more confusing when you throw religion on it because you're saying you tell a kid, all right, there's only one God who's all knowing and knows everything. Right, but then you also throw in this character Santa Claus. Santa Claus does definitely he throws off everything. That yeah, was so who's insane. like kind of like God, yeah. image imagery wise or whatever, jollier and doesn't smite people, I guess. But like he knows when you're asleep, he knows he's when the, you're awake. He's he's just the he's the corporate god sneaking in. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he is. He's, he's one of those like guy. really good things that ain't so great actually. Like when I look back on it, my childhood was great. I was privileged. I was super privileged, and I loved, I loved being a kid, looking forward to Christmas. But God, that's horrible. It's really, it's so awful. It's, it doesn't teach you a goddamn thing about the world or how it all works. Well, not just it's the fact that somehow every parent is cool at some point like with that telling lie. that and like the entire yeah. like everyone's in on it you know what i mean like it is a parents <laughs> and kids and their children lying to each other it's an interesting phenomenon that it can't go away like a lot of my friends have you know sick parents but, my like, parents have lied to me a little bit over the years like parents lie to their kids to their dying day they don't want to stress them out and shit you know oh hell yeah i'll never forget uh, i was gone for a summer and i had pet turtles and they told me some story about like the turtles had a disease that i was allergic to and so they had to get rid of the turtles and then they told me later like the turtles died <laughs> <laughs> and i was like you could have just left me <laughs> i mean death is also scary to talk about i, I no no but i'm just saying like you could have just so left curious me with, to know like, how i would be as a father and like because i'm a pretty open guy i like keeping it real i like talking about all the nitty-gritty shit but like you don't have kids yet right no when yeah, it's yeah. your own kids like what yeah like how do you teach him everything when is it okay to talk about certain things as early as possible right i agree but I, but obviously you can't be talking about everything at the beginning but i don't know maybe see, not maybe not you know it's, see, I don't, there's those parents who just do everything in front of their kids and their kids are fine right that's that, and that's one of those things is like do i want to because like i feel like if i start the habit of lying to the kid they're gonna pick that up and they're gonna figure out you know what I mean? Even yeah. if it's not as, as conscious, they're like, nah, they've told me things that aren't entirely true. It's okay. I can yeah. tell them. And, like, I would rather just be, like, because it takes, and, like, is is that, a th- like, that's one of those things. It's like, yo, have, how did it get to the decision that, like, nah, we're not going to tell them? Because, like, 
a mama wolf doesn't be like oh i'm gonna shield you from like you know what i mean mama wolf is like yo you better start learning how to hunt soon yeah na- nature is super hard for I all mean, the animals out there it's not it, it seems super hard and we're caring and you know is it em- emphatic or empathic we're we're yeah we're empathetic creatures yeah. I always have a hard time saying empathetic because it has the word empathetic. I think you could say, you could say emp- empathic too. I think that's a word. Yeah, but no, I, I I like the I like the idea, but always saying it always like but it's like is it really empathetic like? Yeah, like, it's who, a weird yeah. <laughs> who made this language? <laughs> a lot of the best words are really hard to remember, man. No, a lot of the a lot of good words somehow like seem close to bad words too it's like you know like actual curse words yeah i'm all about keeping language simple i i, I try not to use like i think people when people are using big words all the time it's like shut up stop it well you know what you know <laughs> why the english language is a really like it's a dull blade kind of language it's is it a dull blade yeah it's not really sharp or to the point or pretty either it's it's brutish i mean and that's just because like i've i've been graced to like learn um, a couple other languages. Yeah, there's definitely and other languages sound way more beautiful rolling off the tongue. Not just the, but like the way that the ideas are constructed is they're like... Older. Well, their cultures are older. Yeah. America's it's more, it's, got that like we were starting from scratch thing going for it. So yeah, it's like, got that like, yo, we need to like, I don't have time to... And like, that's one thing that I do appreciate about American language is not actual like American English, like textbook English, but like yeah. local vernacular. Yeah, cause, it, it's a cool thing. Because people actually get to the point, and like, I, yo, from like, at, like, I'm I'm actually obsessed with that. And I that I guess as much as people don't like Drake's like musical appropriation, there is a thing where like, if you go to like a city and you see like this uniqueness of culture and this like unique like use of words that you know what I mean. Like they say the same exact shit, but like it's just how they do it there you know what i mean like in new orleans like everybody says baby at the you know what yeah. i mean like thank you baby and you don't even feel like road trips are the best because just like the landscape is changing every 45 minutes so are the dialects so are people's like attitudes and like for no like um what is it cincinnati and kentucky are like 20 minutes apart but completely different accents completely different mindset and like there's not that much difference neither geographically between the two like there's no like large landmark it was just a line that people (laughs) people drew but somewhere on this side of the line they just talk like that yeah and on that side of the line they do it like this and like that stuff is fascinating i mean you could dig in i'm all about like writing I, i like writing movies about or like thinking about writing movies and stories anywhere you know you could really dig in there and try to figure out what happened and tell like twenty different stories with all the different people around there. I would love well, to work. Inf- infinite stories, really. I'm looking for people to work with on film projects. Well, then we'll keep talking, man. Yeah, that's my that's my biggest aspiration. I'm back to comics right now because I'm kind of like really. I gotta do shit solo a little bit. I'm gonna make a short film. I'm gonna make like low budget short films and stuff. All right. To get to the feature level, because that's like that's the big goal. You gotta get that feature under your belt. But yeah, we got a little bit of resources that we could well i don't know we'll figure Pulling out resources is definitely the way you got to get it done on an indie level man you gotta team say, up we have some resources that we could contribute and some help on like the marketing front and of course if you needed music yeah. for it we'd make sure you have lots of dope music because it's not just me on the label there's a handful of like really amazing talent on the roster before i go to them who's on. who's on it you want to shout anyone out um i want to shout out sanity because he'll he would absolutely he's yeah, also cool dude. the acting president of the label and just helping me and like i love the story behind things. his name man reclaiming something that was negative people calling him crazy and he's like well i'm gonna be sanity actually yeah exactly um just a really really brilliant beautiful mind and um we worked on what i would call a collaborative project that's that's going to be coming out hopefully i want to say like to set you guys as fall right you know what i mean like cool. before halloween but right in time for spooky season it's called murder of crows and um murder of crows yeah yeah because that's you know like um it's what a, a gaggle of geese a flock of seagulls um and a murder of crows that's what they call it yeah you don't call it a, a flock of crows it's a murder like yeah, well, like that's what a group of crows is called. They're I th- called. I think I probably knew that. I totally forgot it. That's crazy. And I always just thought that was like really, really dope. 
but yeah. it would also be like cool for like a, it's group a great name great group name um, is that that's the name of the group or the album kind of well i mean like we were oh. like if we were to collab together that would be like the name that's, so this is the so first you two together are yeah so i'm doing of crows I'm, I'm handling all the production and then there's features from um legendary mcs like kenyatta black rock nest monster from helter skelter um and we're looking to get killer priest on there soon and wrap the album up and i mean like it was dope because you know that was a long sandy's a long-term friend of mine and my production's gotten to a level and seeing him for the longest time like have these amazing ideas and concepts and not really have like someone tailor the production to like fit that and then to be like yo let's build from scratch and like like it's it, it just really sounds like dope and just like has like a, a texture and a feel to it so i can't wait to hear that man um that's really cool and then i gotta shout out cashton because like that's like wonder kid um, I wouldn't say he's an R&B singer. I would just say he like has an amazing voice and has like these awesome concepts and ideas to like I get to put music to. And um, nice. I said just amazing voice, dope, dope, out of these world concepts that like I've not heard like you know what I mean like stories told that I haven't heard like told through song before. Um, so. And just, you know, like, the sonics that, like, his energy, like, like brought to me when I started picking out, like, sounds and, like, laying out beats are just, like, kaboom. So, um, probably in the next couple of weeks, you'll see, like, just a flurry of all of, like, all of the work that everyone had been putting in. And then we'll, like, put it together as a playlist. Um, and, yeah, yeah, that'll be volume one of our playlist. And we're just going to kind of we'll do like kind of selective projects and we also you know want to like do outsource projects with artists where it's like hey come in and we'll give you the full treatment we'll do um the production for you you know help you pick features and and bring in maybe some talent you didn't know you could get on your record and then we're gonna market it and promote it and make sure that it gets like seen and heard and like you know what i mean help you with like release parties and all that type yeah. of stuff and um you know our booking department has been getting busy so where you know it's 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 exciting because really this was just um a group of, of friends and close people who were like i think if we all really really work at this and and everybody you know does does their role and works at it we can make something magical happen so um yeah yeah, yeah man shout out to cash and shout out together to, man Shout out to Sanity. Um, there's a couple other knuckleheads that we're going to see if they actually make it, you know, to the studio. But, I mean, this is a fun part for me, too, because, like, I'm finally, like, looking for other talent to, like, develop and work with. And, like, seeing other people's, like, dreams come true. And, like, like yeah, Ashton was somebody who I, I, like, had the, the honor of, like, meeting. And, like, he hadn't really, like, made tracks of his ideas with anyone and didn't have like and like it was just one of those serendipitous like yo i'm looking for someone to work with and you're looking for someone to work with you like what you know what i mean like like yeah. i don't know i just it i it call me crazy but it felt like one of those vh1 behind the music moments like when i met him like i was <laughs> like yo i'm like it, it happened and then i'm I was like i'm telling this story i already know because it's just the why you know what i mean like you don't just meet people off like the random and they happen to be like dope as fuck and you have the opportunity to be dope as fuck with them and the chemistry just like works on an artistic level so um i'm really excited about what's gonna keep coming from from that growing and stuff and um yeah i think that's the best way to grow as an artist man i mean there's, yeah. there's two ways you got to go inwards and do your thing but the other way is like think about others and bring them into your fold and yeah or get invited into their fold and collaborate man that's that's the best thing about music it's like of all the art forms it's like maybe not the easiest but I th it could be the easiest one to collaborate on you know it's just like it's meant you have to, you have to get in rhythm with other people it's like yeah it just breeds collaboration yeah um i think when when it works it is like the it has the most seamless feel to it i'll say right. that um but you know 
I've I've also seen enough train you've, wrecks to be like you've seen it not work. Yeah, to be like Ugh. doesn't it's not always meant to be. Um, but I mean, like at, at this point too, I think you know you get to a certain like musicianship. I hope that like the energy brings out the best in people. You know what I mean? So even when it's not the greatest or the most magical, like I always try and have some magic. Like, but I've seen enough train wrecks to be like. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. just always... My, my best thing is just come always with as much of my game as I can fit in the bag to bring out that night. And, you know. you uh, Speaking of which, I mean, I saw you... When I saw you for the first time perform, you were... Uh, you definitely have a bag of tricks, man. You bring out... You got the little oh. pedal dr- drum machine? Is that what you got? Oh. Uh, you got, like, what do you usually bring? How all do you right, do it? So, uh, MPC Live is... Um, a, that was a dream machine that I, like... I, I've been an MPC fan and a, a Kai fan for quite some time, and I, I, I had an MPC 5000 that, like, again, serendipity. I was leaving Hawaii, and I was staying at my homie uh, Chastise's crib, and he had a studio in his crib. And so, like, you know, I had to, like, give up the keys to my apartment, and I had, like, t- uh, shipped my car. So I had, like, maybe four or five days where, like, I was just chilling on the island, not doing shit. And I didn't really have a place to be. So he's like, yo, you can just stay at my studio and we can make mad shit. And so we made mad shit. And then I dipped. And I, like, fast forward, like, two, three months. And I'm in Denver, Colorado. And, like, an image popped in my head. Because, like, I had been wanting this NPC. And, like, an image popped in my head that, like, he had one sitting in, like, a corner in his crib that we never used or touched at all like i didn't even realize i didn't even i didn't even acknowledge it at the time but like something in my brain like when i was in denver was like yo that was it (laughs) hit him up and i hit him up and he was like yo that's cool it's like literally an image like a vision yeah like yo it was like yo it was there the whole time (laughs) like and he was like yo you can have it if you can fix it i think everybody needs to hear that it was there the whole time it was think about that metaphorically not just literally thank you for that one but there is some there's some literal uh some literal takeaway here like what you need is literally there and and mentally there as well yeah yeah if you if you're right like because like i was at that point like i was literally waking up every day and like looking at youtube videos of it or like you know what i mean like like going through the shits and, and whatever and then like it just hit me like yo dude i think it was there and so i hit him and he was like you can have it if you can fix it no, it's broken. I, it wasn't really. I mean, like I figured out how to fix it. It was like Are you generally simple, good with that stuff, or it was actually an easy fix. Um, I mean, a so my whole entire fascination with in life has always been music and technology. Um, like I love gadgets. I've always like taken apart like radios and shit and figured out how like how to make them or like make tapes or like. I made, like, CDs for everybody in my school before people, like, knew how to, like, make mixtapes and shit. So, like, I've awesome. always been insanely fascinated. So, like, I don't want to say that it was easy to, like, you know what I mean? Like, right. but, but, like... Nothing's, nothing's I, easy, but you, it's more like, a mentality. Like, I'm going to just figure it out. I'm going well, I mean, I to break the, it to fix it. Yeah, like, I've opened so many, like, machines and, like, yeah, I, there was a YouTube video of somebody else doing it. And so it was like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I have an old coworker friend of mine who I think he told me his switch in his mind was like, I'm just for the rest of my life, I'm just not going to be afraid to break things in order to fix it. Yeah, because like, that's that what people they're afraid to break it <coughs> more, right? It's like I'm not going to do this because I'll fuck it up even more. I thought I broke it at first. <laughs> I did. I like I tried to fix it and I didn't have the right tool, so I like improvised. I didn't, and all I, all I needed was a exacto knife. And at the time, like, because I was so excited, I didn't have an exacto knife. I had, like, a Wait. knife from the kitchen. <laughs> and it wasn't, like, thin enough to make this. You had to, like, make a, just a little. Cu- so, like, what had happened is um, the, the air pressure that makes the pads play, like, if you don't use it for long enough, it has a, a mechanism or, like, just a, a fail safe where it'll drop so that dust won't collect in it because dust would destroy it long term so all you have to do is take like a razor blade and put a little cut and it'll lift it back up so that the air pressure can cause it to like play and shit right and so that's all that it was though like it was designed to like like if you didn't use it long enough it'd be like all right well i'm gonna 
close this off so that dust doesn't accumulate here. So I'm but, not. Sh- I'm not even sure what you're talking about. It's like it's like the drum machine. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's nerd. Like it's, it's nerd shit. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm into it. I like nerding out. I like to. I'm not so much a musician, so I'm. I'm usually on the outside of that stuff, but I'm fascinated by all of it, man. Yeah, but like, long story short, I opened it up and I went and got the same exacto knife that dude in the video from YouTube had, and I did. I just followed what he did, and then it worked. So here's another lesson: don't stray from the YouTube tutorial. Nah, dude. <laughs> do if you watch a YouTube tutorial because you don't know how to do it, just do what the do and the and like. <laughs> Like watch it a few times, and like I I know this yeah, because watch it I'm a few times for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. but like I've I'm successfully so patient, like, I'll just like dive in and I'll watch like like half of it, and it's like oh, I should have just watched that entire thing. That nah, been nah, way nah. easier if I watched the whole thing. Watch the whole thing a couple <laughs> of times. Smoke smoke something or light an incense or you know what I mean. But like yeah, like I changed my my transmission successfully. I've like I've like beaten court tickets and shit successfully. Like YouTube University, man. Like I've I've learned. Any any production shit that I was like, yo, that really sounds dope. I don't even know. And, like, I would just, like, Google search, like, wobbly sound. And you'd see that, like, because of the way the search populated, all right, clearly I'm not the only person who is trying to find how to make the wobbly sound and like <laughs> it might be eight youtube videos of like not the wobbly sound i wanted but i learned some other shit too and i'm like oh okay well i didn't even know i could do that with that button do you know about side chaining yeah 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 i'd have to make a youtube video on it yeah yeah because i or you could talk to some friends of mine every time i hang out with my music friends my like mixer friends they're, it's just like side chain is guaranteed to come up in conversation. <laughs> it's like where the compression sucks around like the kick drum and the whole song goes... Yeah, like that. yeah, it's... I mean, so you can take elements of, of any instrument and tie it to something else so that they don't conflict in the sound plate, which is one way of doing it. Or you can be better at making music. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm joking. But like... I like... No, but I no. like mixing everything right like you could do all you could literally do all of it shift the song so it's doing one thing here and then all of a sudden a whole nother emotion over there well i mean in terms of like if you have a really really big bass then you don't need as punchy of a kick drum right that's also just like yeah i mean strip it down right like like don't clutter the song all the time well, I mean, like, the essential, the essential tune. The, the technology essential of side chaining is the idea that, like, you can, you know, have both without them overlapping. But, like, you know, I don't know. I've, I've begun to really, really, because there are so many technological options, I've begun to, like, go the route of limiting my options so that I have. I feel like sometimes you're more creative when you have less to work with. I think, I think, uh, yeah, you that's, that's I mean? like a creative thing. All creative people across the board, I think, would agree with that. Because, yeah, time is a real issue. Yeah. And so if you have, like, everything on the table, you're just going to spend, like, months fucking around with everything, and you're going to have nothing at the end, right? Or you also get really, really simple because you're like, I have everything, and you start using only, like, two of three things. You know what I mean? Right, but even like, if you have everything, you're just actually using one or two things. Like, how many people who have a 1,000 channels watch all 1,000 channels? Right. The same thing applies to the, uh, yeah, you know I mean, the, the entertained as well as the entertainers. The entertained have the same thing applies to them. So like, you know, what I mean, when I know that I have like, l- I limit the resources, and then I have to just work really, really well with that. It just, you know, what I mean, and like, yeah, I just, it, I don't know. My my approach was like, I really wanted to be like, efficient and like, capture like the details. And then also just make and work with really, really dope sounds. Like, and especially if you're bringing on all these people and expanding your uh, your company and everything, it's like you gotta you yeah gotta make sure you have your streamlined process down. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, I don't want to say we're like a factory, but it, it almost feels like that sometimes because we're able to like, boom, and like it's it's become more attuned too to like we make based off of feel. So like, what feels right. And, like, I don't know, the joy for me is, like, that I can produce something for Sanity that sounds completely on a different spectrum for what I produce for Cashin or what I produce when I, like, do shit myself. So, 
um, or Same whoever else. Like that. I mean, it's it's just feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like like you know, it's whoever sits in the room. Like we we start a vibe. And then the sound selection is from that vibe and the pacing and the tempo. And then, you know, they have ideas. And, like, so, you, you know, it's synergy yeah. more so than anything. Like, I don't, I don't want to take too much credit for it other than that I really love what I do and I put in the time and, like, yeah. you know. but You're a cool dude, man. You yeah. Nice, humble attitude. Yeah, it, the music speaks for itself, man. And then, like, I love doing the live stuff because the live stuff is just, it was, like, for the purest um is you know what i mean like so i just want to describe it a little bit because you're not like you do a layered thing where you you literally like you you ask the crowd S- give me a word and we all and like somebody shouted narcissist right or that was that was fun and then the whole fun. crowd the whole crowd like half the crowd yelled narcissist and half the crowd yelled narcissism but you got it and it sounded funny yeah and then right there on the spot you wove that into a like a recurring thing and you made a beat do you yeah. actually is it a loop pedal or you don't even need that? You have something else that you There's a there's a looper in the NPC. Okay. And then you know, I just have a handful of other little fun toys and gadgets. You have um, a lot of lot of stuff you're hooking up. You're, you're the clearly, Roly Light Pad block. I love watching cool. that, man. I'm a I'm a huge fan not just of like good music, which I obviously want like good original, like from the ground up music, but like I know. people who are able to like on the spot use like twenty different gadgets to make something amazing Me too. happen. I love watching that shit. Me fucking too. That's really where it came from, is like yeah. I loved that shit and like I was like, yo, I want to do that. Like, yeah. Like, I loved, and, like, I've seen various, like, the first live loop and shit i seen was Keller Williams, and somebody put me on to Keller Williams, and then it, it happened that, like, I was on a tour, and every where that I was at on tour, he was somewhere either performing right before, or at, like, or right after, and, like... But you just kept missing him? Like, just name... Well, it was just the fact that the name kept... Par- Pop it like you know, and it was one of those like, like you just things. Seeing like a th- like a thing on the floor that was an indication or, that he'd been or, there, or like, <laughs> like a, his a, name a, somewhere. Like it'd be like Marquee on the Billboard coming next week, and like I was like, yo, I just got introduced to this character, and I was a huge fan. Like immediately, like because he Have was working. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. You're, you're um, going to, man. It'll happen. Yeah, I never even considered that, but now that that's a thing, like we're just gonna put that in the magnet yeah. box. Um but he was the first person I had seen who was, like, using, like, a loop pedal and a guitar. And, like, he was looping, like, his voice and doing stuff with the guitar and then adding, like, percussion just from, like... But I was just like, yo, that's such a dope notion of, like, making the stuff on the spot. And, like, I could see... And, like, again, I'm... It's weird, but I'm a huge fan of, like, the process. So, like, the first thing that I ever got into was was Magic. Like like doing like magic tricks and shit, so that's probably where like the session because all the all you, you said you were into magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was like a kid, kid, but all and like I mean like I had like a, a books and like some kits and shit. Like my grandma, that that summer, she was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she, she was went supporting the magic. She, thing. she she went with it full force. Like I think one of her friends like brought like one book, and I like really got into it, and I did some tricks dope, and she was like, all right, cool, whatever. And then like the friend probably brought more. Or whatever but yeah so but all that magic tricks were was the work that was put into mastering the trick that was it like if you didn't put in and like so i love the process because like once you've like mastered the process enough as is like a magi- magician musician <laughs> yeah, um, either <laughs> like becomes second hand sleight of hand becomes second hand through practice right yeah but the trick isn't as fun yeah, I mean, like doing it is you know what I mean because you're already the aware. Magic trick. Yeah, or like what? It, it, well, that's why I started doing live production is because it was like, oh wow, this is like, a, you know what I mean, like Endless doing this things to master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like doing it, like doing it live is like I can always add to the routine. Like it's, but like it was still the work that had to even go. Like I seen it when Keller was like performing. I was like, damn, son, you know what I mean? Like that's He's perfected his. Uh, yeah. What, what do you call it? The whole pro- yeah. the whole process the whole of like process, yeah. delivering the song, no, you know what I mean, knowing the audience reactions, like just yeah. the whole and like to do it with music. Music is like the only thing in this world to me that I've seen that is both science and magic at the same time. Like mm-hmm. it is both precise and as inaccurate as it needs to be. Like it's, but like there's, I mean, like there's. I, I think that could apply to 
visual art too. It like, is. Yeah. There are moments is. where I'm like, this is like, there's a mathematical equation that could bring this together, but there's also like some loon, like chaos theory probably that has nothing. Well, maybe or that could be mathematical just, too. You but like, it. you know, like order and chaos. It's like it's, yeah, they're both there all the time. Sometimes things just like er Yeah. And like you know, I mean, and like that. It's something in the human spirit too that is like constantly moving in emotion and like we are definitely paradoxical creatures, and we have oh we God. have the potential for good extremes. Polar extremes, good and quickly, bad and all that. Quickly. That's just one of the things of being a spirit in a human body is like the human body has its like things to it. But yeah, dude. Um the music though. So like Keller Williams was the first person that I seen do it, but then like um probably Doctor Bones, who I did meet in person. Um and he's also the 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 um the product demonstration specialist i would just say he's the voice of roly who's the company that makes the light pad block um but i had seen him do like this fly ass live loop and shit on youtube that it, like blown my mind because he was using like matt like he was like playing like spoons and like forks and like a deck of cards like just using weird shit to like make noises rhythmically and then adding a drum machine over that and then playing sense and i was just like yo this shit could be limitless you know what i mean like and it's dope too because it'll like i can do this to like my own quirks and like you know what i mean like toys for making sound or whatever and like instruments that i grab or make or like the and like i'm super crowd participation is like because like when i first started doing it i wasn't like i couldn't figure out how to get the crowd involved and i always felt like it like people were less into it because like it was just like watching some dude which is it has an intrigue to it in and of itself and like is i love that it gets up it doesn't say anything you mean there's huh? an intrigue to it yeah but like like having it feel like they're a part of it like was like that because i still am an mc and like rapping shit so like like having them feel like they were a part of it and that they contributed to this process was like even oh yeah man more. your stage presence is awesome and you're you're you engage it how long did it take you to get to that point where you're comfortable engaging the audience was that like years of figuring it out or did it just like click overnight um and you started trying it yeah no like i I always liked being on stage or whatever and like talking in front of people you've always liked but, it but um, being, like, great, on, you know what I mean? Like, there's that episode of The Fresh Prince where, like, Will Smith is funny and his friend is, like, a professional comedian and, like, Will tells, like, two jokes and, like, they're like, all right, you can have a shot on the comedy night. And his friend is, like, kind of salty. He's like, yeah, you're funny, but you don't even understand the work that I put in. And so then Will goes up on stage and, like, it he's not actually a comedian. You know what I mean? Like, it immediately shows that, like, funny dude or not, like, actually working a it's crowd a whole other is like, thing. Yeah. yeah like and like the that only comes from like being on stage a lot so yeah. i've just been on stage a lot yeah thankfully they haven't stopped me <laughs> from yeah. like being up um but but as far as engage like deciding really, to engage the crowd that way that came with looping and doing doing that like constructing the song on the spot right I'll, um and I, I had always wanted to figure out how to do it like from the time that like the idea of live looping happened that was one of the only things that like i had seen nobody else do yeah and like i was like i want to figure out do how to do it somehow yeah. and so yeah um and then they ended up like right after that show, hey that was hilarious because most of the performers most of the people in that crowd were performers or artists at that point in the night so that the word narcissism was like like i was just like this yeah, is it was a theme i forget what i don't even remember anymore but it's cool because the comedy and the music don't really necessarily drive together like the comedians are super thrown off they're making jokes about how like it's yeah. hot and cold it's hot and cold how do i go but but there's definitely like like every, the comedians are obviously really good at like riffing off of what's going on. They feed off of whatever's being talked about. I yeah. love it, man. The theme evolves. Yeah. And yeah, you brought it to a head with narcissism. It was funny as hell, man. Yo, that I mean, and you have I, a comedic aspect too. It's not like blatant comedy, but you're like your your pre, your stage presence is up there, man. But you're I didn't able to pick bridge that. the gap between comedy and music, and because again, the music the musicians get up there. And they're not so funny, and it's like awkward because this guy was just making this guy or girl was just making everybody laugh, or failing at it, or trying. And then now you gotta like bring in, yeah. But you you're just like right there in the middle. You bridge the gap between the comedy and the music and the stage presence and everything. 
I'm secretly envious of comedians. I'm Me not, too, man. I'm not brave enough to try comedy yet. Me neither. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to necessarily do like stand up. That's not and a I life have, goal of mine. I have too much respect for the craft. Yeah, too. it's a definite craft. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, like I've. I really, really am a huge, huge, huge stand-up comedy fan. Like, my girl and I, like, Same, yeah. as we drove around the country, we had a Pandora comedy station. Who were the, who were the funny, who were you, do you remember who you were listening to at that time? Um, Richard Pryor, Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. Um, um, ah, ah, uh, Gabriel Iglesias, um, Fluffy, um, Kevin Hart's on there, of course. Yeah, Cat Williams. Um, and then there's the, you know what I mean? Um, Leslie Jones. Um, there, there, I mean, like, there's tons of comedian, like, it, it, you oh, yeah, know, it rotates. Um, that, it's like, that it's like old media. You can't catch up with it. You're not going to listen to every comedian before you die. <laughs> Probably not, but, like... Um, but we're going to try. But, like, I'm, I'm like, like, I'm such a nerd that I listen to the, like interview series when comedians speak which is hilarious to me because comedians are typically like dry as fuck in interviews and like funny at like random moments too, yeah but I, i'm like but they also because they break down like you know what i mean like Their comedy, minds are super analytical i mean they have they have philosophical minds they're not they're not just clowns no and you have to in order to philosophers in order to begin to see the comedy and everything you have yeah. to start looking at the world objectively and in a way that is like funny you know what i mean like you have to start seeing the comedy and everything yeah you have to be able to laugh at yourself that too how funny you are that too very it's much hard so. <laughs> but like yeah. i'll be a, as a white man at comedy shows in brooklyn at gama forest <laughs> i'm i got singled out i don't know if you were at the show but i i think i i was a little drunk and i spoke up the woman's joke was something like white men's heyday was like i forget what year she said and i was like it might have been the 90s and she was like Shut up, white boy. We don't need any white splitting tonight. We've had enough out of you guys for all the last fucking centuries. I got yeah, I got called out, but it was it was funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> but that I mean, like that's part of the element too of like the comedian gets free reign is the only person. Yeah. Like as a musician, you cannot insult the crowd. You are dead as a musician unless you're a comedian musician. But yeah, I know what you're saying. I totally know what you're saying, man. E comedy, that's why they, they kind of conflict with each other. Because it's like comedy is about like shining a hard spotlight down on whatever. And like it might turn to an audience member or a fucking political thing. And like it is. It's about like making fun of it while illuminating it, you know? And like, but the music is about making us feel something. <laughs> Usually for comedy shows that I've seen, it, it was interesting that they had it interspersed, but it's usually like music first. And one, then, yeah, not, and not then comedy. One and then the other. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the music first gets people, like, loose and open-minded, and then there's space and premise for, like, comedy. Because, like, they're I like... I think it could work. It just depends on, like, who's who's up. Like, you could... You're there. You could do it. Yeah, like, yeah. It just depends on who the comedians and who the musicians are. Like, some people are more elastic, and other people are just like, oh, my God, what just happened? I, don't, I can't follow that up, you know? There's that, but there's this also like the energy switch yeah. is all. It's just it's, a, it's an energy switch, yeah. And not just that, but you tend to lose crowd. Well, and, that's that's and, another funny thing that that's like apparent at all these shows I'm going to. It's like people show up for their person and people show up for their thing. You know, whether it's comedy or music, whether it's their their comedian. You know, it's like people just they they just you know they want to go home and everyone's trying to do a hundred different things. Yeah, it's but hard to keep that audience. When that's why you have to transition smoothly and quickly. Like yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and if you have if your lineup is right, because I throw events. I've I've been strained from throwing like bigger events. I've been doing like my little Blitzkrieg. Cool. Tight community joints. Where do you like, do? Gamba. Uh, we have an event called Church where like your that, church. Yeah. That's right that um which we'll probably bring back next week wednesday after because we're, um, we're at um bizarre this week but um what, what is church the whole premise of church is like it's kind of like i'm making beats live but everyone is involved so like if you have an instrument if you have a beat machine if you want to freestyle or sing or you know play tambourine along or you want to paint while music is happening and we just kind of groove jam live uh, I'll, I'll definitely have to make it out to one of those men or like like so, like there's been times where like people will like sing like you know like 
background groove riffs and then i'll sample that and then have that playing and then they can like you know go hard over that or like just whatever like, and I, I think i can guess why you call it church but why why do you call it church it ends up just being a wild tribal spiritual experience yeah. i i didn't call it hi it, it was initially you called know, like something else or anything, or no like, no no it was initially called something else and then everybody that somebody else said it that's usually how I name things. Is yeah. If somebody else like says it and that feels right. Oh, I take I take names from other people. Yeah, well, names no, somebody, are super important, and, and if they're wrong, they're wrong, and when they're right, you know it. Well, like we were just jamming, and somebody was like church, yeah. and I was like, church. That's where we are right now. And like it church just, is a concept. I'm into it, but then in practice, I've never enjoyed it. And um, I've been led to a lot of horrible things in, throughout the centuries. So I've enjoyed to take it and use it for something good like this. I'm all about it. I've enjoyed. Well, I've enjoyed churches the church is like a th- you know what i mean but yeah. um no the idea of cuz anything can be a church like this is church right, right. now in, in a sense is like a tr- the the, that. the the definition is a gathering of people was it under like to rejoice or like share an idea or whatever mm-hmm. for worship gathering of people for like wor- or like whatever it is so like that gathering of people that is church when people all get together to like create music and like it's i I did it deliberately on wednesdays in the middle of the week because like i didn't want to do like a heavy competing saturday shit (laughs) and i i just wanted like something where people felt like great during the middle of the week like why not sunday you don't want to compete with actual church no not not even that just i wanted something in the middle of the week yeah okay like people when people have shit going on and they need something to make like, like getaway yeah like to look because like you need the spiritual healing you know what i mean because like tuesday morning you're like well there's church wednesday yeah and then like sunday and monday are always like the worst days for me even though i'm on this like total freelance lifestyle it's like it's just ingrained in me where it's like sunday comes around i have to go back to school work shit so yeah it's, it's always good to have something to look forward to yeah that's what i'm saying so like that was just the concept for me um are you, uh, I'm guessing you're more on the spiritual side and not, like, subscribing to any one religion, or do you? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's yeah. not, like, I mean, you know, th- there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and there's no one right way. No, not at all, not at all. If, I, um, if someone's telling you how to eat a Reese's, tell them to fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> they were raised like that. I, I try not to take it too personally from them, because, like, you gotta remember, like, the idea of burning in hell came from the fact that, like, they burned people alive in, like, front of people, like, yeah. as a thing. Like, we're not that far removed from, like, not being very nice people. We're still pretty, like... Oh, yeah, I mean, like not too long ago. I mean, there's still pretty barbaric things happening, but... Right now. But just, uh, yeah, I mean, technology just, changed everything in the last century. We're, we're a century away from, from a whole other era of, like... Yeah. Just primitive, like, closer to being primitive... Yeah, Wild which is beasts. like our grandparents and their parents, which isn't yeah. that, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, we're still, I mean, like, I, I'm aware of the foulness of all humanity. Like, none of us have ever been that, that's what I'm saying, like, no one is really that good or bad. We've, like, if there were, like, a more advanced species that peaked in, I'm pretty sure they was like, mm, nah. Like, they're like, they haven't really worked it out yet, like. Think about it. we haven't as a as a society we haven't figured out how to not oh, have yeah. everybody hungry. Yet. I mean, I I believe there are aliens and you. I'm on that that like UFO boat. I believe they're out there. And, I mean, and they're definitely looking down at us like, just like oh fuck, they they could they could just blow this planet up, but they don't fucking have control over like their their garbage systems. Like, yeah, like, polluting the shit out of the goddamn planet. Yeah, and like global warming and all that shit. Obviously, we don't even know how to use energy properly. We're mismanaging all our energies. Yeah, we're we're we got a lot to figure out. Even well, though we're so smart. I'll tell you a story about Hawaii that um, local homie told me, because um, he still likes to walk around barefoot. Because he remembers like when he was a kid that it was absolutely fine to walk around barefoot. It wasn't even like it's not. It wasn't a sign of poverty. It was just that like, you know, that you could do that. Yeah. And it's way better for you, actually, for various reasons. Yeah, there's even, like, runners who run barefoot. Yeah, it's it's better for you. So um, running philosophy. It's better for your feet. But um, there was a time before, you know, people discovered the island where they had figured out the whole island kind of, um, I want to say, almost like a machine. So there was, like, a side where all the best fishing happened. So that's where the fishermen fished. And there was a side where 
the best coconuts grew and there grew enough coconuts for everyone and then a handful of people caught enough fish and you know what i mean like there was like fruit there was enough abundance that the people didn't have to work and the abundance was spread and like it was peace which is always why people are like less ready for war when it happens of course but that's also where the perception that the people were lazy came from but no they mean like they're not being trained to fight because they figured out like a level of peace and commerce and yeah and they're not fighting each other so there's less like you know easy to conquer it it happens like that sometimes. Unfortunately, um, that's the history of the world right now. Yeah, no, the ha- the the most peaceful places were the easiest to conquer because they were like, yeah. shit, man, I'm not even like of a mind state for like war like that. Not to say that the Hawaiians weren't warriors, but like they weren't ready for like. Yeah, I mean, all cultures have had to fight and had had their own bloody histories, but yeah. Yeah, you know, um, they they but, there was definitely balance through older cultures over the centuries that we've lost. But they, but I say all that to say that, like, it, if it, there was the possibility of, like, I, I think the earth itself probably works in that way. And, that, like, there is more than enough, you know, on the planet. And there's probably a way, especially now that we have technology, that we can actually, like, like, no one has to work out of, like, I mean, that's a relatively new concept, too. Like, before, most people just, like... I don't know, lived at home or, like, farmed their land or, like, had time to think and invent, right? But this whole, like, stress, stress for money thing is, like, I I almost want to say the new slavery um, because it is so constricting in, like, people's ability to form new ideas and, like, unite and, like, you know what I mean? Have peace or whatever, so, you know. I actually kind of believe the opposite is true in this moment that, like, People didn't have the time to think back then because life was actually really hard back then. But now we now we have we do have the stress. The stress level is there. Like we have to work. We have to get the money and everything. But there's like I think I I personally believe I could be wrong. I personally mm-hmm. believe there's like more people on the planet who don't have to work as hard as we used to, who have the time to like be entertained and just soak in culture now more than ever. That but, there's that too. But we're we're like we're we're not doing the best with it. We're again we're mismanaging even that that. That's very true. Beautiful thing that we which have. Is some, which is something that I, like, am dealing with even in the studio now. Because, like, part of it is that, like, you know, I finally, like, in that space, like, I can, like, watch whatever. And, like, I do enjoy, like, ingesting certain, like, types of content for inspiration or for, like, yeah. knowledge or resources. But, like, there's also the balance between, like, the best learning is in Relaxing. doing no in doing. doing oh yeah or you know what i mean it's it's in like a doing your craft and then you know b yeah just having like quiet time to like 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 what do we say it's already there it was it was always there oh yeah yeah it's it's always there. what you have is is there it's and an like, interesting concept and it's true well no because like it's all around you it's always like you, you whatever you want to be that like goal you have it's kind of already there whether you realize it or not you just don't have the ability to harness it well, no, the ability to harness it, honestly, honestly comes from, like, being quiet and focusing intensely on just that, which, all right, that's, I'm just going to put it on record since we're recording. Yeah. I'm putting that as a goal to, like, a, regain the ability to intensely focus upon a thing, um, whether it's a, a monetary gain or a spiritual gain or, you know what I mean? your 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 physical image or like meeting the right people like i like that you're you're saying that because it's also because kind of what i feel like you're actually saying over, over the last like 10 minutes is a balanced conversation yeah but now what you're saying is like to focus on one thing and what happens when you focus on one thing everything else falls out of balance and that's like our human condition one of our one of one of the things that characterize our human condition yes but there's also like there's a balance to focusing on the well, you, again you have thing too but yeah. what i'm saying is like like in in the balance there still has to be like designated time just to be quiet and see it if that makes sense yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I, mean? yeah. Like, I think that's part of the balance it's like it's not just a two-sided scale it's like a many-sided scale yeah right yeah multi-pronged attack yeah. at all times to like make it real but yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure if we started teaching that from a young age, if I do nothing else in this world but teach my kids that from like Jump Street and see how that takes hold. 
our our kids are in a place where they could be living in like the best age era, but we're also I think we all agree we're on like the verge of doom. Could be like it's going down. It's hard to say. I don't like to just preach doom. Our kids might be in the best time ever because we are, we we have this like new enlightened state of mind that I think I think honestly past generations didn't totally have. I think like yeah there were like great philosophers and stuff, but I think most people are just struggling over the centuries, man. Like really hard. Maybe I think like the Great Depression, you know. Yeah. Even before technology it was around, you know. Yeah. But, but they were maybe closer to nature and happier for it and balanced in a way that that we can't even perceive because now we have all these like thousands of things to choose from. Yeah, it it all goes in cycles. Totally. We can the mind can still only pay attention to so many things. Yeah. At once, what whatever that is. Okay. But I I do I guess yeah because we're in we're in uncharted territory. So one of the things I was thinking is that like the rules have actually like changed, man. Like all of the like you know especially books from like the 30s that were like of pertinent knowledge. Like the, you know what I mean? Like the equation has kind of gotten some new variables in it because I don't know if they ever predicted this level of like contact, human contact, or this much level of like information being dispersed or like, you know what I mean? Only in sci fi, man. (laughs) That was it. But no, not even in sci fi. Never in sci fi was there like Facebook as a concept. Yeah, I mean, not, not, not exactly, but. Where you could be fed. I mean, I guess where you could be fed that much data. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, cause like, yo, I, sometimes it's data. Interesting to see where we actually ended up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we don't have flying cars. We fucked up. Right. We don't have jetpacks or like hoverboards. We are we, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? That's what I'm saying. Like, but 1984, but it's like different. It's not quite. It's like we we're willingly going along with it. Nah, all we got was the cool phones and like yeah. they're not even as cool as the 1984 ones that like were like like projection screens. We we need to get on with that. Oh, Hol- yeah, holograms. Who's who's working on the hot holograms out there, man? Um, I heard Apple might be doing something. That's yeah. that's a nice view. Look at the Is that Queens? Yeah, up that way's Queens. You yeah. See Manhattan that way. Yeah, I knew that was Queens. Yeah, I mean Queens is right over there. We're like a few blocks away from the Ridgewood border. Yeah, that's dope. I love New York City, I do. It's it is. Un, I'm 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 unbiased in saying this because I've like I've checked every dope major American city. New York is the greatest city. It just it just is, dude. Like, not what other city has like, like, th- like let alone the fact that there are distinct famous neighborhoods in each borough just the fact that like there are five boroughs with with four boroughs in staten island with like you know i mean like distinct personalities and vibes to them like i love it here man yeah i'm not planning i don't really want to move um you said you grew up you grew up where in brooklyn yeah i always want to move but i always love it here too you know what i mean like it's it's a thing I mean, just because there's still so many other places in the world to see. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, no matter where you go, there's no place that's, like, like this and has the energy pulse and the people and the the swagger of a city. You know what I mean? Like, it's just dope. But there's still other stuff that I like to see. But what, could I live anywhere long, long term? Probably not. Probably not. Nah. Nah. This is, uh... We're getting we're getting towards the end here. Yeah. And you're, and you're sounding mad chill, but there's a question I have to ask every guest because it's I don't know if you know. It's All a right. Short, bald, and angry podcast. Get, let's get angry. Yeah. What 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 gets you angry? Because I know I know everybody gets angry, and I like I know some people like to avoid anger. Um, oh. but but you know like I like to approach it from <sighs> from the positive perspective. Like, you know, just because you're angry does isn't a negative thing. It's maybe a sign that something needs to change or something. You know alternate side parking oh hell yeah that's a great thing to get angry at pain in the ass man getting those tickets too and you forget about it nah i don't forget about it anymore you're good at not forgetting yeah i don't i don't either nah i i'm, I'm, I'm on it um <clears throat> but yeah that's just um I, i'm angry too that i still can't like just smoke weed in the street yeah it's, it sucks it's it's pointless yeah the taboo is just pointless like yeah 
And I mean, like, even even on the West, like, where, like, you know, it's, it's like, the taboo thing isn't really there as much, but, you know, the cops will still mess with you for it. So, like, I know, <sighs> like, in the, in the lay mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I mean, like, they don't mess with you as much, like, but, like, they'll be like, I smell the shit. You know what I mean? Like, it just, I, I hate bullies. That's what really gets me angry. I, oh, hell yeah. there was a point in, like, I don't know, childhood where, like, I started, I hated bullies, and I liked to, like, get back at bullies. So, like, cop bullies probably are the, the worst, like, and, like, it's not, like, it, even beyond, like, the color thing, because I'm dark as fuck, like, I've just seen them bully, like, everybody, and it's just not a cool, like, way of going about things. And, like, it's the ultimate, like, bully thing, because it's like, yo, I'm safe, and I can do it, and I'm, like, entitled to do it, so, like that makes me angry i don't i don't dislike cops in the sense that like serve and protect i dislike bullies and like taking advantage of the ability to you know what i mean like that's just i hate that shit so much so yeah that gets me angry grr thanks for sharing that man if there was a league (laughs) where like once a month cops could box people from the neighborhood that they that, police that'd in. That would be a good uh, <laughs> outreach thing. Is like we do need to bridge the gap between like the cops and the rest of the community, don't we? Like that's a big problem. The cops are all they don't live in the communities they police. And I I understand yeah. the reason they have to be protected because you know people could come after them, but but still, well, I mean, there's like there's a bit big. Why do gap people want to come after police though? Like, you you get what I'm saying? Like because it, they yeah they do a lot of sh- they bu- I, I like how you're you're like you're going soft on them right now. They 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 can be way worse than bullies as we know. Yeah but yeah, but, but yeah you know, they get a bad rap because there are some bad bad apples out there. I hate when people just say that bad apple shit. No, nah, yeah, there's it's, enough. It's, like, it's not just that there are like bad apples. Yeah, it's that the the ones that aren't bad apples. I, it, there's a culture that protects that or that like you're not allowed as a cop to like you know what I mean tell another cop not to do some like crooked shit and like yeah. that's that's even worse the, you know what I mean like so it's gang mentality it's like every we're all in our different gangs and they have their own gang yeah gotta, yeah keep your mouth shut don't tell anybody about what we just did yeah but if you know you had to once once a month come box in the community that you that, that could it could get ugly but it could be great right like everybody comes around and watches a fight and i mean well i mean in the in the sense that like you gotta think like when was the last time you seen somebody like hate a canadian mountie i'm not saying that they're like <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah they're really like great but you know what i mean like they don't have the rap could be a really dark side of the canadian canadian mounties that we're not aware of but but like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like we, we everyone played, in the world the is aware. Everyone yeah. in the world is aware of the dark side of American police. Like yeah. that's like that's like one of the things we're known for. It's like you know guns. I mean, it's it's related to a lot of things. It's definitely part of the uh, the dark underbelly of this country. Yeah, like, that's so, just a symptom. But that's what I'm saying. Can't is like cops only. That, that shouldn't be like a thing though. Like we shouldn't. The people in general should not all unanimously hate the cops, and the cops shouldn't unanimously feel. Their first feeling shouldn't be we need to defend ourselves from the people that we're supposed to protect. Like that, yeah, you know I mean, like that whole paradigm is wrong. Well, when the wrong. when the protests break out, you have to question who the cops actually work for because it's obvious who they work for, and it ain't the people, sadly. And see that that's when it's like that's where we that's where we get pissed off. Because it's like, all right, I don't know what you're really here for then, like yeah other than to like peaceful protests i mean come on what are you what are you doing get harassing people at peaceful protests new york isn't so bad like but this country's had a lot of uh shit go wrong at the peaceful protests lately oh yeah that portland shit i got i have i've only seen the headline and like talked to other people and nodded my head as i heard it so like yeah. i don't i don't want to like go I'm on, not up on the current events either but like yeah i seen the headline and i was like really yeah. nah but yeah, why not? I'm sure it happened. Yeah, it's, it's, and like like I said, it's a very it's, complicated country right now. It always has been. Yeah, and people are. Complicated. I think I think it gets more complicated though with more technology and more factions and more groups. It's just like more of everything, you know. Yeah, that's it, why it I makes said, it more complicated. We're in a fun time right now because all the rules have kind of just. You know what I mean like you gotta think, Facebook, today isn't what Facebook was, three years ago. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? Like, it, it, there was a point where it literally was just a phenomenon because people could connect, and we were actually obsessed with connecting. Right. But then once we were all connected, you know what I mean? Because, like, Facebook that was, itself is getting more complicated, more things, and it's obviously, you know, advertising. But, like... Well, I mean, that's that's Even the way, like, where protesters are, like, reaching out. Protesters reach out to each other through social media, and they communicate that way. Because it's... And then the NSA monitors them through that, too. You yeah. Know? We're uh, we're definitely at the, at the end here. We don't need... Yeah. Unless you want to keep talking, man. No, no, no. We can we can wrap this I up. I usually I'll, close I'll these things... My, yeah. I usually my, yeah, close these things enough. off asking, like, what advice do you give to people, especially young people, creatives? To creative people? Mm-hmm. Young people? Anyone really, um, but creative artists and young people. Fuck someone with money. No, I'm just like... <laughs> hey, no, um, it's not a bad idea. As long as as long as they're not trying to, like, control your art. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, that's... Um, There's apps that's... for this, too. There's apps for both genders, and, and I think LGBTQIA, it's not just for guys, not just for girls. For yeah, yeah, It's for yeah. everybody. Yeah, that's, that's actually, like, a thing. But no, no, for real, for real, the best thing that you can do as a young creative is figure out whatever platform or platforms that you can reach the people that best receive your shit find those people love those people be awesome and work at your craft so that those people will tell their people and you know that's how you really really build a support base and like like i said when you come across the ones that really really support you do all that you can to show your gratitude um work hard to just build your tribe around you and that will give you the ability to like you know be independent and determine your future as as you want and like it's okay if you have you know more than one interest because we're human and we all do so really just try and find ways to like put all your interests together uh into one beautiful thing that makes you able to do something that no one else can do and then i like it man yeah yeah, you'll rule, you'll rule your world. I don't I want to that, say the that, world. That last bit reiterates something I always say on this podcast, which is we're living in an age where we have to kind of do a lot of stuff. We have to wear many hats, spin yeah. many plates. So I agree. And uh, and then so like what's next? And, and maybe just one more time, shout out. How do people find your music, your art, your shows? Um, text 808-400-7526. It's real easy. Text 808-400-7526. 7526 um and my name is deuce ellis so deuce ellis.com but just text me and we can have a conversation because i like being close to the people who are interested and want to support and you know come out to a show I'll, I'll bring you out personally and you know make sure you get the music and maybe some other cool stuff so yeah that's how you can reach me um thank you Yo, Ian, thanks. for having me thanks this for was, coming on the show this was man. gnarly man and i'm gonna make sure you give me a bunch of links they're all gonna be in the description of this yeah let's do that i'll shoot you all of that thanks thanks man peace peace